All right, I'm a little conflicted about this question. Uh, it's number 21 out of 22. So we know that we're in a hard question, even for the easy modules, it's kind of hard. There might be some traps, there's some things to watch out for. We also have a little bit of a story, and that usually also means that there's traps and it's hard to think about. And so my instinct would be maybe we can guess and check here, right? These answer choices seem pretty straightforward, they're just numbers, and they're the values of x. So all right, let's draw this thing, right? You have a wire, it's 106 total, and it's composed of two pieces, x and y. X is six more than four times the value of Y. So it sounds like Y is smaller. And there's where the problem lies, is if I wanted to guess and check these answers, I'd have to re, uh, reverse engineer the, this X value, and that's very difficult. It's basically the way th this thing is phrased. I'm looking at this part only. The Y is what I would kind of describe as like the base number. So X is dependent on Y. I'm about to do some stuff to Y, four times, six more than four times Y. I'm gonna do stuff to my Y to get an X. So if I wanted to guess and check with these answer choices, I kind of have to work it backwards. So it's kind of confusing for my brain to do that. I would much prefer if they said, what is the value of Y? Because then I could just take these, plug them in, and then try to be like, okay, four times this, then add six, right? So it's much easier to do it that way. So, Let's do it that way. It's going to require a little faith here because we can't use the answer choices, but we know that the whole thing is 106. So there's nothing saying we can't just like pick a value for y anyway. And it doesn't have to be an answer choice, right? So it's 106 inches. Let's just pick a number that kind of seems smaller that might be easier to work with. Let's just say y is 10 to start. Okay, well, x is 6 more than 4 times 10. Right, that's what that sentence says. So six more than four times 10. Well, four times 10 is 40, and six more than that is 46. But obviously if we add these two numbers together, we don't come close to 106, right? We're at only 56, this is way too small. But let's try another number for y, let's, let's try 20. Right, let's up, up it a little bit, right? Because 56, you know, it, it's, not, it's not exactly half of 106, but it's close, and if we double it, we'll get closer. So okay, same rules now. X is six more than four times 20. Well, four times 20, four times 20 is 80, and then six more than that is 86. <laughs> what do you know? 86 plus 20 is 106, so that checks out. So what's the value of X? The value of X is 86, choice D. So, in most cases, when we guess and check on the SAT, we are using the answer choices and checking them. But there's a case like this where that wouldn't have been efficient or easy to think about, but there are also plenty of cases where we don't have multiple choices. We have those student-produced response questions, and we can still guess and check, right? The whole premise behind guess and check is that rather than kind of create an equation, we just want to test a number. So anytime you feel confused by a story or something, you can just test a number. That's kind of the, the entire math strategy for the SAT is like we'd rather have a number. So if you ever feel that way, we're like, darn, this is confusing. I wish I had some numbers. Make a number up. Guess and check. See what happens. Um, if you want to do it algebraically, we can kind of just turn this sentence into an equation. Uh, X is, is the easy part, right? Is means equals. Six more than, so six more than means we're adding. Uh, four times the value of y, four y. So there's my equation. Now that by itself doesn't do me any good because I can't solve for x and y because, well, there's an equation with two variables. We, we can't solve when there's two variables that are different. We need another equation to kind of work into this. And we do have that because we have that x plus y is equal to 106. That's the equation they gave us kind of at the beginning when they're telling us that the whole wire is composed of these two parts and so we just add them together. And if we have that now we can treat this like a system and we can solve by substituting in for x we'll substitute this piece in here and so we're gonna get that 6 plus 4y plus y is equal to 106 so that's 6 plus 5y is 106 subtract the 6 5y is 100 and divide by 5 and we get y is 20 which is what we guessed up here. 
Now, that's not an answer choice. I'm actually surprised. I would have figured they would have thrown that in just for the sake of trying to confuse you. But uh, no, um, maybe that's, you know, a good thing. Uh, maybe it, it would have been something we could have guessed and checked, you know, a little in a sneaky way before if it were, were an answer choice. But um, the, the point I'm trying to make is uh, you're going to have a gut feeling on a question like this. You're either going to be like, oh, yeah, this I can turn this into an equation. I can solve this. and You're just going to be instantly in it. That's great. Good for you. You can probably do that. Just be really careful. Show your work. Make sure you get it right. Um, if you have a you know first look at this and you're very confused, don't give up. This is this is what guess and check does for us. Is it gives us this other path. It might not always be the fastest path, but I'd rather you have one path open to you than zero. And so even though it's a hard question, you can still kind of force your way to the right answer. I'm hoping by being able to just like experiment a little bit, take a leap of faith on some numbers, and just see what happens. Um, Hopefully that helps and gave you some options for this question, but also for others in the future where that first thought is confusion. You do have other options available to you.